And so let's have a look at uh, how we can avoid uh, giving away our uh, privacy uh, or how we preserve privacy within our, our CAPTCHA infrastructure. So the method I'm going to outline is elliptic curve verifiable oblivious pseudo random function or ECVOPRF and it's used within uh, Tor and also uh, it integrates with uh, Chrome and Firefox. So we've all seen CAPTCHA, and CAPTCHA's there to be able to differentiate between whether we're a human or whether we're a bot. So for us, hopefully, the challenge should be fairly easy. But we have to often have to authenticate ourselves multiple times. So why can't we authenticate ourselves once in a verifiable way, and then to be able to pass by uh, that proof that we'd be able to prove or, or solve this puzzle? And that's been solved with this method here. So it was it has been developed in order to be able to create tokens which can actually show that the solution has been uh, solved, uh, but also to pr preserve the privacy of the user who is actually proving that the capture has been solved. It exists at the current time on the Tor network so with the Tor network, Bob will first authenticate himself to Alice, that uh, he's a human through the Tor network. And then what happens is that we get a number of uh, pass tokens. So these tokens are passed from Alice to Bob, and then Bob will pass each one every single time that uh, he needs to authenticate himself through a capture system. Alice won't be able to resolve uh, the identity of the uh, of the person who's proving themselves. So the method uses what's called the oblivious transfer, and with oblivious transfer, we can't actually tell which one of the entities that have been passed is the one that's been picked. So this is an example here. Let's say that a theatre has a number of seats and we want to pick one of the seats but the theatre shouldn't be able to know which one we've actually picked. So initially what we could do is we could apply our, uh, a key onto, the, onto each of the tickets. Then uh, we would pass each ticket and then Bob in this case would add his own key on to the ticket that he actually wants. The tickets can then go back and we can see here that we end up with these uh, encrypted values. So this one here will be encrypted twice with the theatre key and with Bob's key. So then this key here, the theatre decrypts but still can't tell which ticket that Bob has actually selected. It will then go back and Bob will decrypt with his key that he's used and he will be able to get the seat for uh, the theatre. This uses a special type of encryption uh, that allows us to be able to take, apply the keys and, and, and to encrypt and decrypt in any order. The method itself is this. So let's say that we're going to have 30 uh, tickets to be able to authenticate Bob as a human. Bob's going to authenticate once and then we'll generate a number of uh, tokens or tickets that will allow him to be able to authenticate himself to Alice without Alice being able to track him. So Bob generates 30 random values. Next, we match each of those values onto an elliptic curve. So we end up with an X, Y point here. We take the X value, and that's the X point on the elliptic curve, and we take that. Now, Bob adds a blinding factor. So that's a random number that he has to remember. He'll then multiply each of the elliptic curve points by B. This 
will generate these values here, b times x1, that's an elliptic curve point, to b x30. So then Alice will take each of these values and then will multiply each of them with her private key. So we end up with k times b times x1 will give us a point on the elliptic curve. Then, when Bob wants to use these, he will divide by b and then end up with k1, k times x1 for the first one here. He takes a hash of that and passes it back and reveals the x1 value that uh, he determined. Alice then looks this up and finds out that there is a value and makes sure that it, it, it computes that the hash is the same when she uses her uh, key value here. So in this way we can actually prove uh, each of the tokens. So it's been applied at the present time uh, through Chrome and and through Firefox, uh, through uh, a Cloudflare uh, hosted uh, GitHub. So let's have a look. Okay, so here's the here's the site here. In this case, I've generated uh, 60 passes. So I can use these passes on a single site, and then when I run out, I can generate more passes. So let's say I want to generate, so this is on this site. So for each site, I can generate a number of passes. And I've proven myself there. So the next time I, I uh, go to this website, then uh, it will take one of my passes. And when I go down to zero, I can generate more passes. Okay, so that's been a quick outline of our ECVOPRF method. Thank you.